these hard-working little creatures are often presented in the most uncharacteristic ways. Particularly, they are associated with aggressive behavior. Anyone must have heard or read some scary stories of bees attacking people, killing large animals. The only legitimate part to all that is that honeybees do have a personal weapon, the stinger, armed with venom. However, these insects are rather peaceful by their very nature. In the spring and summertime, thousands of bees work on the flowers in the gardens, orchards, in the wild, and have no time, no reason, nor inclination to chase people around. Even when someone tries to catch a bee, she prefers to fly away and avoid confrontation rather than escalate it. She normally resorts to using the stinger only to defend herself or protect the colony. For a man who meddles with the beehives irresponsibly, appears clumsy, disregards bees' defensive instincts, the chances of being stung by the guards are higher. Beginners in beekeeping also tend to handle their colonies in a way that may agitate some of the hive's inhabitants. An experienced beekeeper works gently, often with his veil off, and bees seem to disregard his actions. That's what we usually experience at our apiary, no matter where the activity takes place, at the workbench, over an open hive, or next to it while examining a frame all covered by bees. One day, during a short period of particularly scarce nectar flow, we were busy working on a prototype of this special contraption for harvesting royal jelly and rearing of the queen bees. On a side note, this original device and the corresponding technique of its application are featured among other innovations in our recently published first book of the World Inside and Around a Beehive series, entitled Tandem Beekeeping. It is now available at select bookstores or by direct order from the authors at this email address. So while we were busy honing the holes of this thing with a cordless hand drill, the bees kept flying and crawling around as usual. Those lucky to find a crumb of beeswax were prompt to pick it up and carry it down into the hive. Initially the bees paid no attention to us or the tool we were using. Yet eventually some started to approach the drill for a closer look at the honing rod that was spinning continuously. Suddenly one of the bees, as if by impulse, jumped right on it and made a few lapses. Seeing this turn of events, another one joined in. Very soon others followed suit. There were bees who must have realized that climbing higher onto the chuck would give them a wider circle of rotation, which must be extra fun to try. Even as we turned the drill over with the tip of the rod pointed up, some kept trying to land on it and spin on the pinnacle. And so our bees were having fun, enjoying free rides on a merry-go-round as we kept polishing dozens of the holes. Once all of them were done, the amusement rides had to be stopped as well. Now we'll have to think of some new engaging ideas that would allow bees to cheer themselves up at the boring times of scarce nectar flow and entertain us along the way.